Okay, so this is Hess's Law Worksheet from your package. Question number two. You want me to do yes? Should we start with number two? Okay, so I'll just switch the color. Okay, so um, it always helps to know exactly where you're going. So we're going for NH, NH3 gas. Write your state symbols, write your state symbols, write your state symbols. You're saying to me, I need to write my state symbols, but yes, you do. Gas yields 4NO plus. 6H2O gas and gas. Okay, I was right to do on this board. Okay, so you're asked to find the delta H for this reaction. And it's given you three reactions, and you know you need to either flip them, multiply them, or leave them be in order to have them cancel out and net this above reaction. So if I have N2 plus O2 yields. 2NO given to me, delta H equals negative 180.5, all of which are gases. I look at my reaction above and I look and I say, oh, I need NO. This gives me NO both on the right hand side of the equation, of the arrow. I am not going to flip this one. Everybody okay with that? But I need four. NOs and I only have two NOs. So I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to multiply the whole thing by two. Which means I also have to multiply the delta H by two. This will give me two N, in fact I'll change the color. This will give me ooh. 2N, no, yeah, 2N2 gases plus 2O2 gases yields 4NO gases. And my delta H for this would be, somebody help me, 361 kilojoules per mole. Okay, the next equation says it has N2, N2 gas plus 3H2 gas, <coughs> giving me two NH3 gases. What of that equation do I need from the above equation? Colton. I need to multiply by two, why? What did you look at? The NH3s, okay, so you need four NH3s, what side are the NH3s on my ultimate goal? On the left. What's the problem? They're on the right. So not only am I going to multiply this by 2, as you suggested, but I'm also going to flip it. Okay, so that results in this then. Four NH3s yields 2N2s <coughs> and 6H2s. And the delta H for that on the sheet is negative 91. So because I flipped it, it's now positive 91. And then, not, and then you also multiply it by 2. So it's now positive 182. 183.6. Is that right? Somebody help me with my math? Good. Kilojoules per mole. Do you understand where I got that number from? Do you understand where I got that number from? Uh, yeah. Screen. Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. So it also gives me a third equation. Uh, 2H2 plus O2 yields 2H2O. Um, what about this, Jacob? What about this am I going to need? Right, because of the waters. So six waters up there, so two waters down there. So I'm going to multiply this by three. They're both on the right-hand side of the arrow, so there's no need to flip. And if I multiply that by three, I'm going to multiply my delta H by three as well. So in red, that would be, I'm just going to rub, yeah, in red, in red, that would be six H2s plus three O2s gives me six H2Os. My delta H is no longer negative 483, 
but it is now three times that. Somebody help me with the math there. Negative one four five zero. Thank you. Kilojoules per mole. Then I'm going to only look at the reds. I'm not trying to make this eraser bigger. So I'm going to only look at the reds because that's my, you know, after I finished flipping or multiplying. I have to learn how to write a little smaller on this, I think. Okay, and my net value then will be, just to make sure I've got everything cancelling out and being the way I want it to be. Uh, my two M2s here are going to cancel out those two M2s. They're both gases, so they both cancel out the same. My, um, what else is going to cancel here? Oh, I've gotta, I'm going to add my oxygen, so they're going to end up adding together. My six hy well, uh, hydrogens are going to cancel out those six hydrogens. That's all the cancellations I can see. So I end up with four NH3s, gases, five oxygens. It's a rubbish five. Five oxygens. Do you see where I got five oxygens from, Craig? Do you see where I got five oxygens from, Jacob? Yeah, from that. Good. Um, six waters and four NOs, both of which are gases. You see that? And then my delta H's, it is that 361 plus 183.6 plus negative 1450. And the final answer for the delta H <coughs> ends up being negative 1628 kilojoules per mole. Or just even, in fact, actually, it's not kilojoules per mole because there's no one mole of anything in that equation. Everybody listen to that point. In question two, even if you've got the right answer, your final answer units are just in kilojoules, not in kilojoules per mole because there isn't a per mole of anything. I've got four moles, six moles, five moles, four moles in this equation. And it's not per mole of anything. So it's just, your answer is just negative 1,628 kilojoules. Done. So if you've got a per mole there, rub it out. And by the way, when in doubt, don't put the per mole in. Because you, you won't be wrong. It's that many kilojoules for the one mole. Okay, so when in doubt, don't put, the, don't put per mole in, just put kilojoules. Does that make sense? Okay, so have a go at the... Sorry, there's a negative there. So it's negative 361 plus positive 183 plus negative 1450 gives you still that answer because I looked up the back of the book as opposed to pushing it in my calculator. There are two ways of answering Hess's law. The first way is algebraically, which is what we've just done, right? It's what we've just done. And all, the, all of the equations and the delta H's have been given to us for us to flip or multiply. So for example, let's do this one algebraically together. C8H18 liquid plus 25 over 2O2 gases yields 8 CO2s and 9 H2Os, gas and gas. And the question is, what is the delta H not C of this reaction? What is that? What does this C stand for? Combustion. Ooh, this isn't any better at, at writing this pen. Oh, well, we'll get used to this. And this zero can be written either as a zero or it can be written like this. Do you know what that is? It stands for standard. Okay? And it means it happens at standard ambient temperature and pressure. So that means 
one atmosphere of pressure, that's important for the gases, one mole per liter if it's a solution, so that the concentration is one mole per liter, and I'm missing something, oh, temperature, 25 degrees Celsius, room temperature. Okay, so that's what SATP is. And the react, the delta H is the amount of heat release it will be different if it's a different pressure for the gases, et cetera. So anyway, if, if we compare everything at standard, then we know they're all the same. Okay, so algebraically, <coughs> they would have to give us uh, uh, that equation. Can I rub that out? This, the whole thing? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> All right. So they're asking us to find C8 8HT uh, plus 25 over 2 O2s, 8 CO2s, and 9 waters. And they want us to find the standard enthalpy oh, of combustion for this reaction. So then they give us the standard enthalpies for these reactions. Have you noticed these knots on all of your equations so far? Anybody notice them? No? they give us? One, two, three, and they ask us to solve <coughs> for this one. That's the question. Everybody have that? And we're going to solve this algebraically like you did this whole sheet. So I'm going to switch colors and tell me, can you see what we're going to need to do to the first equation? Multiply by eight. No, I am following along on my notes, but you are writing this down and following along with me. What are we going to need to do with the first equation? Multiply by, Multiply by eight. Why? Because yeah. I need what? Sorry? Eight CO2s. Yeah. Can we do with that? So multiplying by eight would give me eight, 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 and eight times that number. That's a faster way than writing it out. But it's very important that we write it out when we're first learning so that we really understand what we're doing. Although when we do understand, we can go. Yes? Um, is that kilojoules per mole? Yes. Okay. The next equation. What are we going to do with the next equation? <coughs> Multiply, by Multiply by 9. Do we need to flip it? Yeah. No. Why are you multiplying by 9? Nine? Nine. Nine. For the 9 waters. What side of the arrow is that on? Right. The right side. What side is the arrow is that on? Right. The right side. So no need to flip. So multiply this whole thing by 9. 9, what's 9 times 1 half? 4.5 and 9. And then multiply that by 9 as well. OK? Next equation. Do we need to multiply it? No. What's, what's the subject you're looking at? What's the chemical you're looking at? The CH18, probably. So we need to flip it. Yes, Emily? Is for the O2 on the second, is that 4.5? 4.5, because it's 9 times 1 half. Okay. Is it just a flip? Pardon? Just a flip, you don't have to multiply anything? I'm, I'm going to flip it. I do not need to multiply because there's one of these and one of these. And do you know what? Up till now, I'm just trusting that the other stuff will cancel out. I haven't even looked at it. It's just too <coughs> cumbersome to think of everything at the same time. So I'm trusting they're going to cancel out. And if they don't, I must have done something wrong with my multiplying or flipping or something. And then I go back to square one and start again. Okay? So for this, I'm going to flip it. So actually, it's probably easier if I rewrite this equation. DBC8H18 goes to 8 carbons and 9 H2s. Oh, what, what, what's, the, what's the F mean here? 
Formation. Formation. Are these formation reactions? And your class change. Yes. What, did that, what does this just become? Decomposition. So, you know, to be exact, I would put a D there because it's now no longer formation, it's rather decomposition. It doesn't really matter, no. But if you want to be perfectly correct, one should pay attention to such things. And what do I do with the 250? Make it, Make it positive. So now it's positive <coughs> 250.1. Now what do I do? I look for cancelling. Okay, so do I have, a, I don't want any carbons, because in my original question I don't have any carbons. Do the carbons cancel? Yeah. Eight on the left side of the arrows and eight on the right side of the arrows. Do the um, hydrogens cancel? I hope. Yeah, nine hydrogens on the left side of the arrow, nine hydrogens on the right side of the arrow. Thank goodness, because there are no hydrogens up here either. There are oxygens up there, so I'm just going to leave those. There are carbon dioxides up there, so I'm going to leave those. There are waters up there, so I'm going to leave those. And there are um, octanes up there, so I'm going to leave those as well. Okay, so now nothing else cancels, actually. So now I start writing things down. C8H18 plus, I'm hoping these add up to 25 over 2. If I have 8 and 4.5, is 12.5, <coughs> is 12.5 25 over 2? Yes. yes. So 12.5 is the same, th you can write 12.5 or you can write 25 over 2, whatever feels more natural to you. And how many carbon dioxides have I got? Eight carbon dioxides, that's good because I wanted eight carbon dioxide. I want nine waters, do I have nine waters? Yes, I have nine waters. Remember your states. So I'm just going to pop them back on because they didn't need to cancel, but sometimes they do. That's a liquid. That's a gas. That's a gas. This is a gas. My delta H of this, what do I call it now? F, D. What kind of reaction is it? C for combustion. Because it's reaction with oxygen. So C for combustion, which actually was in our question anyway. Look up here, C. Equals. 8 times negative 393.5, 9 times negative 241, and positive 250. Adding them all up, I really hope that you get negative 5,074.1 kilojoules. I'm going to stick with kilojoules, but I could do kilojoules per mole because it's of octane and there's a 1 in the of the octane. <coughs> There's the delta H that goes with this equation. Everybody okay with that? So that's what we learned yesterday, how to solve it that way. Okay? This is how else you can solve it. Because actually, Hess <coughs> also realized that as long as I'm using formation, formation, formation reactions all the time, I can solve this another way. And your data booklet has a whole list of formation reactions. So, if they say to you, calculate uh, the delta H naught C for C8 H18 plus 25 over 2 O2s goes to 8 CO2s plus H2O. So same question as before, okay? Only this time, they're not giving you any equations to flip, multiply, or, or add. They haven't given you anything. That's it, that's the end of the question, done. So at this point, you freak out, and then you look in your data booklet. And you go, oh, I've got a whole bunch of formation equations in my data booklet. Your data booklet page, I don't know, eight or something, I think, just off the top of my head. Four. Four, okay, I don't know. Data booklet page four gives you a whole list of formation equations. And if you wanted, you could create an equation like this. You could create those equations and write your delta H's and then multiply them, flip them, or you can use this fancy dancy equation. It looks like this. Delta H for a standard temperature, ambient temperature and pressure reaction. 
So the enthalpy of a reaction, our Xn reaction, at a standard enthalpy tem temperature and pressure equals. So in other words, the delta H naught reaction for this equals these big E's, which look like that. They're a math symbol for, anybody know? Sum. So it just means I add them up, or totals of addition, though. Okay? So I'm going to add up the number of moles I have of all the formation <coughs> reactions of my products. Ooh, what happened there? Ooh, hello. Okay, everybody okay with that? Minus the sum of the number of moles of my delta H naught F of my reactants. So what does this mean? This means I go to my data booklet and I look up the delta H naught F. In fact, I better choose a different color for that because I'm subtracting. I go to my data booklet, I look up the delta H dot S for the products, and I multiply that by the number of moles in the equation. Oh, those aren't products, those are reactants. Undo, undo. That one and that one. Oh, I also didn't balance that right. There should be a nine there, shouldn't there? Okay? So let's do that bit first. <coughs> Go to your data booklet, page four, and try to find the formation reaction for carbon dioxide. Can you find it? Pardon me? Negative 393.5. <coughs> That's how much it costs it takes to form one carbon dioxide from carbon and oxygen. What's the number of moles? How many do I actually produce? I produce eight of them, so I will get eight times that much energy. Eight times negative one nine three point five plus nine times the water one. Well, that's that's <coughs> the point. So in your data booklet, you have two. One is for liquid, and one is for gas. The one I have written down is two nine two four one. So that must be gas. Yeah. So you use the gas one, you use the gas one here, 241.9. Uh, different data booklets. I use, did I use point 0.9 over here? Or did, oh, I mean over here, point 0.8, point 0.8, okay, point 0.8. Okay, so, hold on everybody. All of this stuff here, the sum of the number of moles of the delta H formation is just this. Okay, I look up carbon dioxide in my data booklet. Eight because of eight. I look up water gas, water vapor in the data <coughs> booklet. Nine because of nine. Everybody okay? And I tap and tap those numbers in my calculator and I'll get a number. Whoop to do, that's not hard. Okay? Now to that big long number, I'm going to then <coughs> subtract, those are the products that I formed, those are the bonds that I formed. And now I need to take into account the bonds I broke. So those are over here. So that subtract from, right, one times, what is the octane? Negative 250.1. Negative 250.1. And the formation of oxygen? Zero. Zero. Zero because? It's, it's just an element. It's an element. Com you're forming compounds from elements. You don't form elements. So all elements will be given zero. Okay, so all elements 
right? It's carbon, like oxygen, like carbon, like uh, chlorine, would have a formation of zero. So I take that big long number, and I take that big long number, and I subtract them from each other. And this is looking rather messy, because it's on this new board that I'm trying to get used to. But does everybody understand? Can everybody kind of see how my chicken scratch is going here? And so, hold on. So what I have in my nice, neat package here is the delta H of the reaction equals, square brackets, 8 times negative 393.5 plus 9 times negative 241.9 square brackets minus negative 250.1 plus 0. So first of all, all elements are 0. Second of all, those came from the products. That's CO2, that's H2O, and these numbers, <coughs> the 8 and the 9, came from the balanced equation. Okay, the 8 and 9 came from the balanced equation, those numbers came from the data booklet as carbon dioxide and water. This number came from the data booklet as well Oops. switch came from the data booklet as well as c8 h18 because these are my reactants okay those are my reactants c8 h18 there's only a big one in front of it so that's a one and then you tap and tap all those numbers in your calculator i would strongly suggest you tap in all the products <coughs> first. I strongly suggest to do that number in your calculator. Get an ANS. Take your ANS and subtract that from negative 250.1. Okay? And you should get negative 5074.1 kilojoules. Yes? Well, no, that should be 241.8. Changed that oh yeah, we changed it on the board? Yeah. That's irrelevant, really. Okay. Anybody notice anything about that answer? It's the same. It's the same answer. So there are two routes in which to get a delta. In fact, there are three routes in which to get a delta H. One is to use calorimetry from top to bottom. The second way is to do it algebraically, which is your cancelling out. And the third way is to do it using Hess's law of formation, <coughs> using your formations from your data booklet. Okay? Again, it's pretty straightforward, I think, anyway. Where students make mistakes normally is punching them in your calculator. Because if you don't put that in brackets, then the subtraction ends up not adding, and you end up subtracting something you didn't need to, and you, that's what happens most things when students on this question. Okay? So be very careful on the uh, procedure that you use to put it in your calculator. Okay, any questions on that?